So, he brought you his souvenir programme, and now with a special Cut Out and Keep souvenir section of this programme, please welcome John Finnemore. There's an old fable about a scorpion trying to cross a creek. The scorpion comes across a frog and says, Froggy, oh froggy, you can swim and I cannot. Will you carry me across the creek? And the frog says, But you're a scorpion. Won't you sting me? And the scorpion replies, Of course not. Why, then we'd both drown. So the frog agrees. But halfway across the river, the scorpion stings the frog. And as they both sink into the depths of the creek, the frog says, Why did you do this? Now we shall both perish. And the scorpion replies, Don't blame me. You knew I was a scorpion when you met me. There's a new fable about a frog trying to sell off the royal mail. (laughs) Only in this story, it's the frog who seeks out the scorpion. Only, of course, they're not scorpions. They're 16 highly respected hedge fund and investment firm managers. They're nothing like scorpions. (laughs) The frog went to the hedge fund managers shook them warmly by the pincers, and hand, hand, I meant hand, (laughs) and said, Now, look, the government wants to sell off Royal Mail, but we're worried that people might use it to make a vast profit very quickly. And the hedge fund managers replied, Vince, oh Vince, a vast profit very quickly, you say? Well, yes, we must certainly make sure that doesn't happen. Thank heavens you came to us. So what I was thinking was... Uh, Would you perhaps be prepared to allow us to make you priority investors and let you have far more shares in the Royal Mail than anyone else will be allowed to buy before anyone else is allowed to buy them? We would need your assurance that you won't just sell them if the price should rise quickly. I see. You would like us, hedge fund and investment firm managers, whose whole raison d'etre is to buy stock when it's cheap and sell it when the price rises, to assure you that we won't do that. (laughs) Well, that would be great if you could, yes. Yes. Uh, These assurances you want, uh, would they be legally binding? Oh, no, I don't think we need to bother. (laughs) Very well, then, my friend. By our hard, scaly shells and our curly, venomous tails, we assure you that we probably won't do that. (laughs) And so the frog floated the Royal Mail at £3.30 a share. And the priority investors, for instance, Lazard Asset Management, climbed aboard and settled down to be long-term, stable shareholders. And immediately, the share price rocketed by nearly 40%. And this was embarrassing for the frog because it meant he'd really badly underestimated the worth of the thing he was selling. Although it wasn't all his fault because, after all, he had paid three outside companies to advise him what price to charge, uh, Goldman Sachs, UBS and Lazard. (laughs) Now, you mustn't get confused here uh, because of the name Lazard. I should stress that Lazard, the guys who advised the government to sell the Royal Mail at £3.30 a share, and Lazard Asset Management, the guys who are allowed to make a large early investment at this price, they are totally different companies. Well, they're not totally different, but they're not part of the same company. Well, OK, they are part of the same company, but they're totally separate wings of that company. Uh, The company has two very different wings. Imagine a company's like a bird. Um, Okay, then, like a bat. Uh, (laughs) It has two wings. It's got the wing that advised the government what price to set, and then it has the other really very separate wing that made a lot of money from that decision. (laughs) And indeed, the frog wasn't worried. Even as the share price continued to soar, he patted his travelling companions confidently on the carapace because he had their assurance that they were in it for the long haul. And so they were. Until later that week, (laughs) when Lazard Asset Management sold their entire stake and made £8 million. And within months, almost all of the other priority investors cashed in too. And as the poor frog began to sink into the depths, he cried, Why did you do this? Because now we shall both perish. And they replied, Don't blame us. You knew we were hedge fund managers when you met us. (laughs) And also, uh, we won't perish. (laughs) No, you're forgetting that we've got two wings. 
And so saying, the scorpions flapped away into the sunset <laughs> on their leathery bat wings, with their millions of pounds profit clutched in their pincers, and left the frog to drown alone in front of the Public Accounts Committee. <laughs> and the moral of this story, I think, is that the bat scorpions were right. We can't blame scorpions for stinging frogs or investment firms for stinging business secretaries. That is their nature. But we can blame frogs and business secretaries for giving them the chance. Particularly if the business secretary's whole reputation is based on him having been more cynical than anyone else about the bankers, and if he's part of a government which, whatever else you think about them, are really very familiar with the ways of hedge fund managers. <laughs> Because, of course, private companies will do everything short of breaking the law to maximise their profits. That is not intrinsically wrong. That's what they're for. They're actually not like scorpions because they don't want to kill the frog. They just don't mind killing the frog. <laughs> what they're really like is fire. All fire wants to do is burn. And like fire, private companies and market forces can be harnessed for the public good. There's nothing inherently wrong with privatisation. Marcus, oh. down boy. <laughs> but if you're going to play with fire, it is up to you to make sure you don't get burnt. If the frog buys a paddle steamer and contains the fire in an iron furnace, then the fire gets to burn the coal it's given and the frog gets to harness the fire's power to cross the creek. But... If the frog decides to bring the fire up on deck to help him steer, <laughs> at the advice of the fire, <laughs> because the fire has given the frog its solemn assurance it won't burn anything, <laughs> and if the frog is fool enough to believe that, well, the fire was a fire when he met it. <laughs> and the frog is very quickly going to find himself up the creek without a paddle steamer. <laughs> Thank you.